So guys, as promised, it's the season review. It's about a week or so after the season finishes, but here I am with Chris Collins. Hello. Yeah, his first time with one of my mate, best mates. He's made an appearance on this channel. Um, both die-hard suffering Sunderland fans, which is absolutely fantastic. No Credit shit, Sherlock. Yeah. Credit to Dean448 for letting me use his, for letting me film in his house. So I'll, hey. yeah, he's in the background there. Yeah. But anyway, so first of all, I'll ask you then. Give your thoughts on the season just gone. Grade it. Highlights. Low points. Go for it. The low point of the uh, season was getting beat off Leicester four two and then uh, losing three one up the Norwich. They were both pretty bad. Both pretty bad in that game. I thought that uh, the game against uh, Swansea, despite we were a better team on the day, a draw was not enough on that game mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah, but I mean, was there any particular game that stood out to you as a high point? The high points of the I season. Mean, I, I think. I mean, for me, the things that come into category is six in a row against Newcastle. My, beating, beating Chelsea, beating Everton to secure survival, beating Man United, beating Villa and Swansea. My key it? highlights was, I think the best atmosphere was against uh, Everton. That was the best atmosphere because we had sent the mags down. Oh, but yes. I think they would say that the most entertainment, entertaining game was actually the 3-2 the Chelsea match. It was okay. the most entertaining. But in terms of the bragging rights... Six in a row against Six the Mags. In a row against the Six Mags. in a row against the Mags and relegating them to the championship. You can't get much better than that, can you? Well, you can do. We, should not, we shouldn't be in that situation in the first place. Neither should Newcastle, truth be told. But So there's some grapes next to us. Actually, these are Dean's technically, but I'm just I'm just sucking away. <laughs> okay, but uh, what about Otica in terms of goal of the season or player of the season? Kazri for goal of the season, but I would say player of the season as a whole. I would say Jan and Vila was in the first half. But I think in the uh, second half of the season, it was mostly more like you, to be young Kirchhoff. Mm. Is there anyone you think who was consistent all season? The one that springs to mind me is just Defoe. Javier and Defoe, no doubt. I mean, I, I would have said Kirchhoff or Corny, but they've only been here since January, so I can't really. I don't think they could really put them in the category of player of the season when. And some people will, but to me, they're just they're, just because they haven't been they haven't been here the whole campaign. It's not really. You can't. It's not really something I would tend to do, but. I'd agree with you. I think first half of the season, Jan and Villa was just by far our best player. Um, and despite the, the, the um, dross around him, he was the one that was consistently performing on a regular basis. Since Christmas, Jan Kirchhoff or Corny, I think they gave each other a good run for your money. But Defoe, over the course of the whole season, was consistently scoring us goals. And that was the difference, I think, between us and, say, Norwich and Newcastle, which is that we ultimately had someone who could regularly score goals to get us out of trouble. Whereas they didn't have a regular goal scorer, particularly Norwich. Because I think Newcastle had the players to get them out of trouble, but they didn't have the fight until it was too late. And Norwich didn't have the quality up front, really. Because I think when uh, Newcastle, when uh, Steve McLaren was in charge, the rock was in their club was just so deep. Well, it was bound to board decisions, though, wasn't it? The way the reason they went down mm. for me was because of a lack of... Um, ambition. A lack of Well, not so much ambition, but a lack of direction from the board and which direction they were going, the signings they were making. You know, I mean, they spent, what was it, 13 million on Torban? Like, that, that, that needs, that, 80 it, million in that whole season was just laughable not so much that I mean admittedly I was jealous at the time but if you look at uh, there was an interesting statistic on Twitter that said Jan Kirchhoff 750k John Drew Shelby 12 million who's been the better signing the second Kirchhoff, half of the season hands down exactly so but I think um, there, were, there was many turning points over the course of the season um, I'll ask you this then Would you think, was, was there any particular results that you felt was a particular turning point in us staying up the Norwich game when we won three 0 was the turning point for our uh, campaign because we were just like unbeaten after the Norwich game. I'd agree with that. Well, yeah, from that point, but I think as well going into that game we were four points behind Norwich as well, guys. Um, and obviously, had we lost that game, don't know what Chris thinks, but I think if we'd lost to Norwich, that would have been curtains. That would have been us gone. It would have relegated both us and Newcastle, I think. Because on on the same day, Newcastle won three 0 at home. Yeah, but. Their result would have been dependent on what happened with us because we were an early kickoff that day. Um, for me, if we'd drawn that game, I don't think it would have been disastrous at the end of the world because we had a game in hand on Norwich, but it means it would be pressure on us to win that game in hand. And even then, we wouldn't, it would still be out of our hands. So I think going to Norwich and getting a win was a massive turning point in our season in results terms. But and I mean, in terms of our attendance since this season, the average crowd was 43,071. And that, as a whole, for this season, is actually an improvement over the last few seasons in terms of... a attendances well especially when you consider that the the relegation fights that we've had to suffer and endure while we've been at the club which is another reason why we shouldn't be down there i think if you've got the stadium size the fan base we've got because newcastle's in particular has been getting praised for being a good fan base and i think it is 
but Sunderland's doesn't get enough noise. I think our fan base is absolutely fantastic, um, especially away from home, but at home as well. You know, if you look at the um, the Chelsea game, it's an example of what the club could be. And one of the reasons I get annoyed at Sunderland is because I can see the potentials there for us to do good and do really well, but we just don't take it. Well, we've actually got one of the best away supports in the country. Oh, didn't we sell out most of our away games? Yes, we did. So, you know, that's not... But, but I think... Another turning point as well, the last thing I'll go on about turning points, was the January transfer window. Without those signings that were made, so, I mean, if you take away Ndoy, because I don't think he did much. He was shite. You know, but pretty much. But we might end up signing him permanently. I think there's, I think he's better than Fletcher, but it doesn't really say much, because I don't rate Fletcher very much. And you look at Steve Harper, who was there for Pickford's development, more than anything, nothing else. But you look at the three kids, Corny, Kazri and Kirchhoff, four, is it left than 15 million spent? And yeah, I think we did very well there. I think them three made the difference... Just, Especially um, Kirchhoff and Corny. And just to, uh, just to clarify, you don't need to spend a lot of money to finish high in the league because what uh, Newcastle they spent eighty million, they went yeah. down. We spent well only about well over the two transfer windows about forty million probably forty million, so less than half, about half half of that, and we stayed up. But to be honest, do you think we would have gone down if Samuel Adair hadn't come? We would have been doomed to be relegated. I don't think so. But one thing I think that the last point I'll make on this is. Well, one of the last points are probably going on for quite a bit, and no one may. But I think that the, the previous few seasons, 12, 13, 13, 14, and 14, 15, when we stayed up, for we me, just for, for, for too much. Well, I think we've underachieved for the last four seasons. But the point I was going to make was when De Canio and Poyet and then um, Advocat came in, I think Sunderland tended to stay up because of four flash in the pan freak results that happened. You look at um, 12, 13, beating Newcastle away, which wasn't expected at the time. Beating Chelsea and Man United away and drawing at City in 13-14. And then last season, or a year ago, beating Southampton via two penalties and Everton via and two... beating to, Newcastle one yeah, day. Yeah, but, but beating Everton via two deflections. So the point is, I think we stayed up through freak results. And we, you could, I think in the great escape here, we were look, we deserved to stay up. But the other two, I think we deserve to go down. This season, I think it's been a case of since the turn of the year, we've only lost four games. So for me, it's like, well, I think we deserve to stay up because we've shown a consistent, sustained level of performance... And if you take away 80 minutes at Liverpool, the first 80 minutes, last 30 against Leicester and second half at Stoke, we've been consistently doing the right things, scoring goals, defending better and being always in games. So I think we've deserved to stay up on that alone. And for, well, for one thing, in the second half of the season, we didn't really seem to lose very much in 2016. Well, exactly. There was only one game we were con- comprehensively battered and that was Tottenham. Uh, and, they, and they were very good sides. One of the best sides in the league for me. So... But I mean, generally, how would you feel? Um, to wrap it up, generally, how would you feel about the season? Uh, unsatisfactory in like the first half, like up until Christmas. But when, much better uh, after Christmas, wasn't it? But it was better after Christmas. Yeah, I think so. And uh, one thing I will say though is because we finished two points above Newcastle, if every other result had gone the same way as it had done after the derby in March, think how crucial it was not losing that game. Because imagine if we'd lost to Newcastle at St James's. I would have loved the win against Newcastle, yeah. but Mitrovic had to fuck it up, did he? But in the end. A point was all right, though, wasn't it? Yeah, and we stayed up, and it was annoying. But especially when you look at the Southampton and Newcastle games, those are two games we should have won. But the point was, if we'd lost to Newcastle and every other result had gone the way it did, we would have gone down and they would have stayed up, which I couldn't have took, to be honest. But I think generally for me, first half of the season deserves an F at best, and second half of the season I think deserves a B. So I would say probably D plus. I think I'm going to go for C minus purely because we relegated Newcastle. And there's promise for the future because of what we've seen. But I still don't think on paper it's been a good season. But we've got promise now for the future with Allardyce. And hopefully next season, touch wood, we will not be in a relegation battle and be consistently, comfortably clear the bottom three. And also avoid Newcastle and the Cups, please. And there's another thing. We must prioritise in our transfer but, uh, this summer because we must nail down Jan and Vila and uh, Yedlin to contract. Exactly. And I think Alice Short needs to back Allardyce as well. We can't have this financial fair play thing going. I can understand it to a point, but you've got to prioritise the, the football as well and not go around to North America for the sake of pre-season and trips. And around with pre-season. Exactly. We need to get it right and we need to make sure the players are as fit as possible for pre-season to give us the best possible chance of doing well next year. Because when it comes to me, I'm always like, fuck the financial fair play. I don't believe in it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's there for a reason, but I think we've heard too much of it recently. But do you trust Allardyce? Yes, I do. Right. Big Sam, if you're somehow watching this, we trust you. Hopefully we'll have a good year, year, year next year. And one last thing, honest answer. Do you think Newcastle will come back up from the Championship? If they keep Rafa or if they don't keep Rafa? If they don't keep Rafa, I don't think they will come straight back up. But I think if Rafa stays and is loyal to the fans, then I can see them going for the high playoff position or straight up. 
yeah, well, hopefully they stay in the championship for a few years, but we'll have to see what happens in the coming days with that. Anyway, thank you very much to Chris for joining me. Thanks to Dean again for letting us, uh, cheers again for letting us film. Anyway, guys, we'll love you and leave you there, and we'll see you later. Uh, at least now, Saturdays. Safe to say we'll be more... Until the Euros. Yeah. Saturdays, though, will be more boring, but they'll be a lot less stressful. See you later. See ya.